Dominguez thinks. I sat at my desk, reminiscing about our wedding 30 years ago and our honeymoon, some of the best moments of my life. As I immerse myself in these precious memories of our honeymoon in Hawaii with Maria, I am overcome with a deep sense of nostalgia and gratitude. It was an extraordinary and truly magical time that will forever hold a special place in my heart. From the very beginning, it seemed as if we had entered a magical realm that washed away the worries of the world, leaving behind unembodied humility. Walking hand in hand along the immaculate beaches of Waikiki, gentle waves caressing our feet, we were captivated by the sheer beauty of our surroundings. The scent of plumeria permeated the air, serving as a constant reminder of the romance and tranquility that surrounded us. However, it was not only the mesmerizing surroundings that made our honeymoon unforgettable. These were experiences that entered the fabric of our souls. Exploring lush rainforests and chance discoveries of hidden waterfalls was a revelation of Mother Nature's majesty. Standing nearby, we marveled at the raw power and majesty surrounding us. Our Maui villa, perched on the clifftops and giving us panoramic views, seemed to stretch on forever. Every sunset was a masterpiece, painting the sky with vibrant hues, and in those precious moments when we held each other tightly, our hearts were filled with an overwhelming feeling of love and commitment to each other. And the nights. Oh, the nights were a symphony of romance, starting with a candlelit dinner on the beach under a canopy of stars as we savored the exquisite flavors of fresh seafood and island delicacies. However, it was the tender look in Maria's eyes that made these evenings truly magical. Hawaii has become more than just a destination. It became the epitome of our love story, a chapter filled with precious memories and shared dreams created exclusively for both of us. Looking back on our honeymoon, I am again humbled by the beauty and depth of our connection during that period. Hawaii acted as a catalyst for our love, nourishing our union and giving us moments of unparalleled joy and peace. It is with deep gratitude that I cherish the precious moments we created together in this paradise of romancy. Now, 30 years later, lost in thought, my secretary walked into my office and watched me stare out the window. Then she asked Dominguez, what or who should we thank for your good mood lately? Did you win the lottery or something? Can you tell us? At that moment, I realized that I had been smiling and actually in a good mood for the past two weeks. I explained that my wife had become especially attentive and loving lately, and for the first time in many years, I was appreciated and loved. I ended by saying, I felt like I was on my second honeymoon, and for the first time in years, I was looking forward to being with her all the time and couldn't get her out of my head. Over the past two weeks, I have often called my Maria just to hear her voice to tell her how much I love her and how much I miss her. I acted like a teenager in love and didn't care. I was happy again and didn't want it to stop. Maria and I have a strong marriage, but a 30-year relationship may become less exciting and more mundane. But over the past two weeks, Maria has been playful, wanting to have sex almost every night and doing things to me that she hasn't done in years. I never suspected or thought that the change in her attention was anything other than a revival of our marriage. I planned to surprise her on a romantic evening and left work early. With a smile on my face, I paid for two dozen roses at the flower shop and filled out a card with hearts expressing my love. Then I went to the wine store and bought her her favorite wine, along with a large box of cherry chocolate, her favorite. Tonight I was going to not only tell Maria how much I love her, how happy she makes me, but also surprise her by buying us a seven-day cruise to celebrate our love. Smiling and with spring in my step, I entered the house through the garage. As I walked up the steps to the kitchen, I saw Dolores, our 29-year-old daughter, instead of my loving wife, Maria, sitting at our kitchen table. I smiled, kissed her forehead, and said hi. Hey baby, where's your mom? I've always heard that these next words are the hardest words to hear from a woman, but until you actually hear them, you'll never understand. Dad, we need to talk. Two weeks ago. Dolores, I'm not sure about this. I love your dad so much, and I'm afraid that by going through this, I'll hurt him. 
Mom, Dad loves you, and you'll understand. I mean, you said it yourself that you needed more than what you were getting, and Dad isn't getting any younger. I know he will understand your needs and allow you to experience this one-time excitement. Dolores, there is no way I could face your father and tell him I was on a date with another man. I just couldn't do it. Then let me do it. Alejandro will be waiting for you at the restaurant at 7 p.m., and you will be ready to leave at 6 p.m. I'll be here when Dad gets home, and I'll explain everything to him, and you'll have the experience you've been craving. Honey, I know I agreed to this date, but I've changed my mind. This is wrong, and I shouldn't go. How can I look your father in the eyes for the next two weeks, knowing that I agreed to go on a date with another man? Mom, may I suggest that you don't say anything and show him how much you love him during these two weeks? Let him know that he has nothing to worry about, and when I explain everything, he will understand that what you are doing has nothing to do with love, just new communication and a little fun sex. Connect with him and rock his world, and when I explain the situation that night, he will welcome you back with open arms. Trust me, Daddy loves you, and he would do anything for you. He always gave you what you wanted, and that's how he shows his love for you, Mom. I think so. And maybe you're right. I mean, it's just one date. And it doesn't mean I'm leaving your dad for another man. Having a fun night after 30 shouldn't be a problem. I'm going to show your dad how wonderful he is and how much I love him every night until my date. And then I will try to make him the happiest man in the world when I get back to him. Mom, just make him feel loved and appreciated. He's a great guy and he'll give you this one-of-a-kind experience. Now I have to leave and go home to make dinner for Andreas. Thanks, baby, and tell Andreas I said hi. When are you two going to give us grandchildren? We've been talking about it soon, and we plan to start working on it in a few months, Dolores said before leaving home. Maria sat alone in the art studio Dominguez had built for her behind their house, in front of her latest project. Lately, she has been struggling with her creativity as the thought of being with another man has been overwhelming her. As Maria pondered Dolores' words, suddenly her brushes came to life, covering the canvas with vibrant colors and emotional scenes. Suddenly, she felt confident that she was doing the right thing for herself and that her husband would support the experience. She found herself talking to herself as she sat alone, feeling a sense of peace overcome her guilt. Dominguez may be irritated at the beginning, but I know I can make him understand. I love this man, and he was such a great husband and father. I'm going to be a better wife and show him how much I love him. Dominguez's love begins. The first night of my plan to shower him with love, I put on his favorite baby doll nightdress after showering, styling my hair and taking extra time to do my makeup and greeted Dominguez in his high heels and 90s when he walked into the house and took him straight to the bedroom where she undressed him. Unbuckling his belt and lowering his pants, I surprised him with something I hadn't done in years. His smile made me feel warm and happy that I could do this for him, and I wondered why I hadn't done this before. He took me into his arms and told me with a big smile how much he loved me. Maria, this was the best homecoming I've had in years. What's wrong, baby? I just wanted to show you how special you are and how much I love you. Did you like it? I loved it, and so much time passed that I forgot how much I missed it. It made me feel good, and I pulled him down on the bed with me, and we kissed for a few minutes. He eagerly removed my wet panties and took me like a wild man, fucking me for the next ten minutes. After three amazing orgasms, he came inside me. It was the best sex I'd had in years, and I started to rethink my date with Alejandro. Over the next two weeks, our sex life reached new levels of excitement, and Dominguez became a new person, smiling, laughing, telling jokes, and as loving as ever. I was happier than I had been in a long time and thought again about my plans for that date night. I even told Dolores how things had changed and that maybe I didn't need this experience anymore because things were getting better with Dad and me. Mom, that's great, but don't give up yet. Let's see how the next two weeks go. Just enjoy each other and see where it goes. 
There's no need to cancel anything right now. Let's see how you feel in two weeks, and you can always cancel at the last minute. I'm sure Alejandro will understand, but you need to realize that you may not have this opportunity again. Okay, you're probably right. Tell me more about Alejandro. I know he's dad's friend, but tell me again about his situation. Of course, mom. He found out that his wife, Marissa Bell, had an inoperable brain tumor. He took time off from work and spent every second with her until her last moment. She was the love of his life. And after her death, he turned into a shadow of his former self. Apart from work, he never left home and turned into a carefree person, not interacting with family or friends. Her death created a void in his heart that he could not fill. Over the past three years, he became depressed and a silent man. When Marisabelle and I advised him to go out and start dating, he explained that he had no one except his wife, Marisabelle. Mom, listening to this wonderful man brought tears to my eyes, and I came up with an idea that could be a solution for both of you. I told him about your deep love for your dad for 30 years and what a wonderful wife you are was. I told him how your sex life has slowed down over the years and how dad has slowed down as he gets older. I told him that we discussed going on a date for a change, not a long-term relationship, but just a friend to hang out with. And maybe something more, but nothing long-term, since you will never leave daddy. When he saw your photo, his eyes lit up and he smiled, asking me if I thought you would want to meet him. Here's the conversation we had. Mr. Ricardo, I can assure you that when I show my mom your picture and tell her all about you, she will jump at the chance. She is several years older than you. Will that be a problem? No, if she looks like that, not at all. I'd love to spend some time with her. What about your father? Would you really let her date me? I mean, she's his wife. Leave it to me. Daddy will do anything for mommy to make her happy, and she needs it as much as you do. I think you two can help each other and become good friends. Leave it to me, and I'll arrange it all. I'll talk to her, and if she agrees, I'll give you her number, and then you can arrange a date and a night together. Night? What do you mean? Mr. Ricardo, you two are adults. You both need each other. Get creative and plan an evening and a night together. So you can see that he thinks you're beautiful and would like to spend the night with you if you're interested. I'll give him your cell phone number and tell him to call during the day. He's really good looking and about 10 years younger than you, and I know you'll be happy. He just needs some companionship and a friend, and I know you can help each other. The next day, Alejandro called Maria, and after a great conversation, he asked her to go on a date with him and spend the night with him. She felt like a schoolgirl when he told her how pretty she was in the photo and how great it would be if she went on a date with him. The excitement of seeing her do something so different and his flirting made her panties wet. She felt excited hearing his deep baritone voice and placed a finger on the material of her pants and rubbed her pussy as she talked to him. She agreed to the date and told him that she was looking forward to meeting him. He told her he would pick her up, but she said she would prefer to meet him at the restaurant. Dad, we need to talk. I love my daughter and consider her the most beautiful girl in the world. I was so proud of her and how she grew into the woman she is today. I wish I had spent more time with her as children, but I worked hard to give them a good life and tried to be there for her as much as possible. I smiled when I saw her, but I was embarrassed. Honey, what are you doing here, and where is your mother? I asked, watching her watch me place two dozen roses on the table next to a bottle of wine and a box of chocolates. I have a special surprise for your mom tonight and I can't wait to see her. Reaching into my jacket pocket, I pulled out an envelope with tickets and travel plans. I'm taking your mom on a new love ship for a seven day cruise and I can't wait to see her face when she finds out. Don't say anything. When she gets home, I want to surprise her. Dad. When she called me daddy, I always smiled remembering how she was a little girl and sat on my lap. But I felt that something was wrong. There were tears in her eyes, and she was very confused, worried about what I was going to hear. Dad, we need to talk, she said, and a tear rolled down her eye. 
She saw the worry on my face. What happened? Did something happen to mom? No, mom is fine. Just sit down and let me explain. I sat down and looked into her eyes filled with tears as she found it difficult to continue. After a moment, she began to speak. Dad, you know how much mom loves you, and she was telling me how wonderful everything has been between you two lately. Yes, and I love her too, and that's why I want to show her how I feel. But seeing her cry, I realized that whatever she was going to tell me wasn't going the way she planned. Forgive me, Dad, but Mom is dating someone. I was silent, listening to the words, but not understanding their meaning. Her tears flowed as my mind connected the dots, causing a bit of anger. Dolores, what are you talking about? Where is your mother? I demanded in a loud voice causing her to shrink away from me in fear. Mom really loves you, Dad, and you might take it the wrong way, but Mom went on a date with another man and won't be home until tomorrow. She couldn't tell you herself, and I offered to tell you this because she was having a hard time with you. Hurt. It's just one night and Mom will be back tomorrow. Is this a joke? You can't be serious. Your mom would never do anything to betray me. She was always so loving and we were so close. I don't believe it. Dad, she loves you and just needed this one thing. After 30 years of marriage, she was uncomfortable with herself and needed something more in her life, just for once. Nothing will change between you two, except that she will love you even more for the fact that you provided it to her. I look at my daughter with an intense gaze. Dolores, why are you involved in this? Your mom should never have gotten you into this, and I need to discuss this with her, not you. How did she get you into this mess? Dad, you know that Mom and I have always been very close, and we tell each other everything. She told me how things had slowed down in the bedroom between you two, and how she no longer felt wanted and needed some excitement. My dad's friend's wife died a few years ago. He was feeling so bad, and he also needed company, and somehow I introduced them. I quickly stood up, knocking over the chair behind me. What the hell? Are you kidding me? You introduced these men, arranged a date for your mother with another man. Is that what you mean? With her head bowed and eyes fixed on the floor, she remained silent. I was now pacing back and forth in the kitchen, trying to make sense of this catastrophic scenario. Damn it, Dolores, answer me! I screamed as I stood over her. You arranged this? My wife? Your mother? is on a date with your friend's father, and you organized this. With these words, I began to drool. Sorry, Dad, but yes. You say it sounds bad, but I did it for the love of my friend's mom and dad. Damn it, what have you done? Love for your mom and your friend's dad. What about your love for me? What am I? Trash that you can step on and expect me to accept whatever comes my way. Where is she now? And what did you mean when you said she won't be home until tomorrow? Daddy, he took her to a restaurant, I'm not sure which one, and then they'll spend the night together, but just for once. She'll be back tomorrow, and Daddy, she only loves you. That's all she told me. The last two weeks, it's how much she loves you and doesn't want you to get hurt because of it. It's just a date and one night away. She knew you would understand and give her this chance. So here it is. I'm a fool for believing that her renewed attention over the last two weeks was an act of love. But now you're telling me that it was her way of letting go of the guilt and making me her cuckold. Well, it won't work out well for anyone, I can assure you of that. Still in tears, she begged her father, Dad, that's not true at all. She would never fake her love or hurt you. On the contrary, she did everything she could to let you know that she loved you. Daddy, can't you just give her this one night? You, you know she loves you and can't live without you. She told me how much she looks forward to your retirement and time spent with her grandchildren. Andreas and I are planning to start our own family, and we need both. Well, this is just so damn special. That ship sailed the moment she agreed to go out with some guy who wasn't me. Who is this guy? Marissa Bell's father. He's a really good guy and you love him, Dad. I think you two have a lot in common. Oh yeah, we could be such good friends. So you think I could befriend a man who would knowingly date a married woman? My wife? 
Maybe we can be drinking buddies, and I'll let him fuck your mom on the weekends. Is this what you two have planned for me? Dolores sank into her chair, realizing that there was a serious flaw in her plan. She had never seen me be so angry and talk to her like that. A chill ran down her spine as she cowered from my rage. As I paced around the room, I finally regained control of my emotions and turned to my daughter and spoke in a poisonous voice, a voice she never wanted to hear again. My hurt and pain were obvious, and she felt small and guilty for her role in everything. Listen to me carefully, Dolores. I need you to leave now. I need some alone time to understand what you two did to me tonight. I don't want to see or hear you. Don't call me. Don't text me. Never. Your betrayal is unforgivable, and I don't have a daughter yet. You're dead to me. Do you understand what this means? I'm no longer your father and I don't have a daughter. Now get out of my house and never talk to me again. Dolores sobbed openly, holding her head in her hands. Daddy, please don't say that. I love you and I want to stay here tonight. Mom and I planned for me to stay with you. We don't want you to be alone. Dolores, the level of disrespect you have shown me makes me wonder if you ever respected or loved me as your father. You are your mother's daughter. All these years I have worked like a dog to give you and your mother the best life. That's the gratitude I receive. No, it turns out I was only here as a meal ticket and apparently never earned any respect from any of you. Between tears and sobs, she continued, Dad, I love you. Please don't say that. Just leave it to Mom and let her explain tomorrow. You've had 30 wonderful years together, and I know you love her. Just give her this one thing, and she won't leave. You, Daddy? She loves you. She may have her one thing, two things, or a thousand things, but she will never have me again. This is beyond my ability to forgive. There will be hell here for all concerned, including the lonely man who took my wife, the married woman. Now go away. You showed your true colors. You still have your mother. Nothing will change for you. You and her were destined for each other. Like I said, Dolores, in my heart, you are no longer my daughter. So please just leave me alone. As tears rolled down her face, she literally ran out of the house in pain. A pain she had never experienced before. She never imagined her daddy would answer like that. Did he really disown her? For the first time, it occurred to her that she might have crossed a line by helping her mother with this idea. She knew he loved them both, and she saw that he was angry, no, furious, and she prayed that he would forgive them. Dominguez takes action. Right after Dolores left, I called Maria's cell phone, which went straight to voicemail. I left her several messages begging her to call me back and come home. Then, after drinking a few times and not getting any calls back, I left several texts with the same message. No answer. At 2 a.m., I realized that she had no intention of returning home and had no intention of calling back. I was tired of feeling sorry for myself and just stared at the TV which just happened to be delivering more bad news. My world turned to hell in the blink of an eye. I remembered our 30 years together, the good times, the birth of our daughter, all the parties and graduations, Dolores' wedding and the closeness we all shared was now gone forever. Before Maria's betrayal, I still had sex two to three times a week. Yes, it has become a routine and not as exciting as it was 30 years ago. But there were never any complaints, and in fact, we always cuddled and held each other after sex, falling asleep in each other's arms. There wasn't a day or a call when we didn't say goodbye to each other saying, I love you, and we rarely quarreled. Peering out the window, I found my eyes drawn to the art studio I had built for Maria to support her hobby. She spent the last 20 years mostly creating wonderful paintings and sculptures in this studio winning several awards for her pieces, which were displayed in a room I built to display all her awards and paintings. It became a sanctuary for my wife's creativity and her refuge. It always seemed like, besides her daughter, that damn studio was the most important thing in her world. I was, at best, third in importance, but I loved her and was okay with that, as long as she was happy. 
The conversation with Dolores really hit me. This revelation about her need to connect with another man completely blindsided me, without a single warning. Apparently, all the years of working long hours to provide for my family had left me too busy to notice that she lacked satisfaction from me or the marriage. It was humiliating and fueled my anger. I thought about my life, my home, and the future. I inherited the house and land from my grandfather, and they were in my name even before we got married. There was no mortgage on the property, which gave me pause. In my drunken state, with a surge of anger, I began to consider ways to hurt Maria like she had hurt me today. Continuing to look out the window at her studio, the devil sitting on my shoulder whispered in my ear. Maybe it was the alcohol, maybe it was the pain of the betrayal or the humiliation I felt in front of my daughter, but suddenly I felt a surge of energy. With this renewed energy, I jumped off the couch and replaced my grief with action. I made over a dozen trips to her bedroom and collected all of her things to bring into the studio. All of her expensive shoes, dresses, clothes, lingerie, jewelry, and everything that belonged to her were now lying on the floor in the middle of her sanctuary, an art studio. Over the next hour, I walked through the house and collected every photo album, including all of our wedding photos, and placed them on top of the growing pile. Then I remembered that she had things in the attic that were vacuum sealed. I found her wedding dress, baby clothes, and many other sentimental items and dragged them to the pile, which was now about four feet tall. It's amazing how much stuff one person can accumulate over the years. Then I took all her pictures off the wall and put them on a pile. The sculptures, all her sketchbooks, and everything she liked were now part of the growing avalanche of objects. It was already 5 a.m., and I was still excited. I promised myself that I wouldn't do anything before 6 a.m. to give her a chance to come home or answer my calls and texts. If there was no response or she wasn't home, I was going to finish what I started. I walked through the house one more time, making sure I had everything that belonged to her and that she cared about, stacked in the studio. At 5.30, I grabbed a five-gallon can of gas from the garage and headed to the studio getting ready for the 6 a.m. deadline. From that point on, I went online and canceled joint credit cards, moved money from accounts, took cash from the safe, and packed a few suitcases. I then put them in my truck since I was going to be away for a while until the lawyers sorted it all out. I waited another five minutes for her to come back, and at 6.05 I gave up my last hope and poured gasoline on the pile and along the walls of the studio, with a deep sigh, and after a few seconds of hesitation, I made my decision and threw the lit match onto the floor, which instantly ignited the pile of her treasures. The fire spread quickly, and before I left the entrance, the flames were already visible from the street. The firefighters working on the studio were able to put out the fire on the porch and save the house, but what I didn't foresee was the fire jumping from the studio to the back porch, which caught fire along with the studio. Luckily, firefighters battling the fire in the studio were able to extinguish the fire on the porch and save the house. The home was severely damaged by smoke and is uninhabitable until the damage is repaired. All this happened while I checked into a Motel 6 along the highway, about 90 miles from the smoldering evils of my former marriage, and paid cash. I didn't want to be found until I could think clearly and using credit cards could make that easy if the police were looking for me. I was awake and running on adrenaline until I opened the door to my room. I turned off my phone and collapsed onto my bed, falling into a deep sleep that I didn't wake up until the next day. My phone started glowing as soon as I turned it on. I had dozens of missed calls and messages from Dolores, Maria, and the sheriff. Date with Maria. After I got off the Uber, I met Alejandro at the restaurant and was excited to see this handsome young man waiting for me at the hostess counter. He smiled when he saw me, admiring my little black dress, black thin tights and matching high heels. His ears were drawn to my exposed cleavage, highlighted by my black wall sconce. I had spent hours at the Salon earlier that day getting my hair and makeup perfect. 
I wanted this one-off event to be exceeding and memorable, perfect for him. My companion seemed satisfied with what he saw, and the manner in which he corrected his inspiring organ emphasized his reaction. My confidence grew knowing he liked what he saw, and I greeted him with a gentle kiss when he greeted me. We started at the bar and sat on one of the bar stools, and as I sat closer, I saw him peeking up my nylon-covered legs down to my naked panties. We both smiled as he ordered our drinks. I decided to turn off my phone so that nothing could interfere with my evening activities. I knew an evening like this would never happen again, and I was going to enjoy every moment. We had chemistry and got along like old friends. I found myself touching his arm and flirting, which was not typical for me with anyone, including Dominguez. But this night, I was going to release my inner slut and enjoy the experience. As we finished our second drink, the lovely hostess informed us that our table was ready and showed us to our seats. It was wonderful, and I enjoyed the conversation and our time together. When he asked me if I still wanted to spend the night with him, I took off one of my heels and put my foot between his legs. I began to rub the material of his pants as my fingers massaged his groin, and his cock grew hard from my playful teasing. When he looked down at my red nails peeking through the thin nylon covering my leg, rubbing his cock, he smiled and said it was time to leave. With his hands, he led me to his hotel room, which he had already prepared. When the elevator opened on the 14th floor, I realized what I was about to do, and thoughts of Dominguez suddenly entered my mind. He must have noticed this because he pulled me towards his strong body. When I looked at him, he gave me a romantic kiss, the likes of which I had never experienced before. That was all it took for me to forget my husband and my marriage. I was going to be his tonight and enjoy the experience. Once in the room, he wasted no time in unzipping my dress. As it fell to the floor, he took off his clothes and stood in front of me, revealing his rock-hard flesh. He turned me around and told me how sexy I looked, and then he took off my bra and lowered me onto the bed. I don't know how long it lasted, but Alejandro made love to my breasts and nipples with his tongue. It was so sensual and tender that I felt my pussy flowing in anticipation of something. I took his cock in my hand and felt its heat and hardness as I knelt and worshipped. He couldn't take it anymore and forcibly removed my pantyhose and ordered me to put it on. I put my heels back on because he found it so sexy. It made me feel a little naughty, and hearing about how sexy it was opened up my inner world and twat. He then effortlessly picked me up like a rag doll. Straightening up, he positioned me so that my legs wrapped around his body. Then he did something I had never experienced before. Starting to kiss me, he slowly lowered me onto his penis. As our tongues continued to explore each other's mouths, I felt the tip of his cock press against my labia. Then slowly, his throbbing manhood entered me, and I let out a soft moan into his lips. Still keeping his lips pressed together, he then lowered me until I was completely impaled by his swollen cock, and that's when I had my first of many orgasms that night. I had never come so fast and hard for Dominguez, and I found myself comparing this man to my husband. I knew this was not good and I quickly put Dominguez out of my mind and focused only on this handsome man. The man who was now driving me unconscious, still standing near the bed. Alejandro then threw me onto the bed without letting me go. He was strong, hard and fast, and his cock kept thrusting in and out of my wet pussy. While we were fucking, he kissed me several times, causing several more orgasms. This man was an Olympic kissing champion. I thought for a moment, I need to get Dominguez to do this. It's so sexy. Damn, more comparisons. Stop that. Then I felt him tense and raise his head as we looked into each other's eyes. He started fucking me faster and exploded deep inside me. I could feel his cock pulsing deep inside me, and I knew he was filling me with his cum. While he was shooting into my pussy, he continued to look deep into my eyes and said, I love you, Maria. It was unexpected and his words touched my heart. The sensations and passion brought me the most powerful orgasm I had ever experienced. I can only describe it as a religious experience, 
so powerful that I was overcome with tears of joy. We made love four more times that night, and again in the morning, each time as intense as the last time. It was by far the best sexual experience of my life, and I was pleased with myself for letting it happen to Alejandro this time. Thoughts of Dominguez began to bring me back to reality, but I tried to focus on the man who was holding me as tightly as he could. While we were lying and the sun was peeking through the curtains, he gently kissed me and stroked me, my hair. Maria, I meant what I said last night. You are an amazing woman, so sexy and sensual. I think I love you and want to spend more time with you. Can I see you again? Suddenly I was overcome with anxiety and I tried to be gentle. Alejandro, it was the best sex of my life, and you are a wonderful, sweet person, but I am happily married and cannot repeat it again. It was a one-time experience and I loved it. You were amazing. You are a wonderful lover and I enjoyed every second. Maria, think about it before you say no. Your husband doesn't seem to mind, and if you allow me to continue, I can make you a happy woman. Just think about it before you say no, please. Okay, yeah, I'll think about it, but it's the best I can do right now. Another deep kiss, and he hugged me tightly. I disappeared into his arms. If I weren't married to Dominguez, I would be with this man instantly. Dominguez was my husband, and I hope he can forgive me for what I just did. Maria returns home. After breakfast, we left the hotel, and as he drove me home, I turned on my phone for the first time since my meeting the night before. I was amazed to see all the missed calls and text messages. I saw the text from Dominguez and felt a pang of guilt in my heart. A loved one was suffering, and I was not there for him. A tear fell into my eye, realizing that its pain was caused by me. Then, before I could move on to the next text, the phone rang as Alejandro was turning into my neighborhood. Mom, where are you? Hey baby, I'm almost home. Mom, there was a fire in your house. We tried to call you all night, but apparently you turned off the phone. Fire? Where's your dad? Here's the thing, Mom. He's gone. Nobody knows where he is. And he's not answering his phone either. I have a bad feeling, Mom. I'm almost there. I'll call you back. When Alejandro turned onto the street, I saw a fire truck and police in front of our house. I didn't see any damage from the front of the house and asked the fireman what happened. Are you the owner of the house? He asked while all the neighbors looked at me standing next to an unknown, handsome man. Yes, I'm Maria Sanchez. Well, Mrs. Sanchez, we were able to save the house with only damage to the back porch. But I'm afraid you won't be able to stay here until you call for a soot cleanup of the inside of your house. Most of the damage was done to the small house behind your house. I'm afraid that complete loss. I felt my legs give way as Alejandro supported me and helped me sit on the curb. My studio, is it damaged? I'm sorry, Mrs. Sanchez, but all that's left is smoldering ashes. We'll be investigating the cause of the fire, but for now, the detective has a few questions for you. I quickly stood up and ran to the backyard before Sergeant Gomez could ask me questions. He caught up with me as I stood in front of the ruins of my most prized possession. I immediately realized that Dominguez probably did this as revenge for my actions. Mrs. Sanchez, do you have any idea what happened here? Asked Sergeant Gomez. No, I wasn't home last night and I don't have any ideas. Is this your husband? He turned to Alejandro. No, just her friend. My face turned red with embarrassment when the sergeant looked at me with understanding and asked where my husband was. I told him I didn't know when he asked where I was last night. Modestly, I replied that I was with Alejandro at the Hilton Hotel in downtown. The looks I received from the sergeant and his assistant made me realize the gravity of my situation. I just admitted that I spent the night with another man when my husband went missing. The detective now had questions. Mrs. Sanchez, are you and your husband divorced? Did you know where he was last night? No, we're happily married. And I realized how stupid that sounded after I admitted that I'd spent the night with another man. Do you know where he is? No, he's not answering his phone. We want to talk to him, so when you talk to him, give him my number, he said, handing me his business card.
I was shaking with anger and fear. Anger at the loss of my refuge and all my years of work. Everything is gone, forever. Fear of thinking that Dominguez could be angry enough to do this and what it would mean for my marriage. I needed to talk to him as soon as possible. I called Dolores. Dolores, do you know where your father is? No, I haven't talked to him since last night. Why didn't you stay here with him like we planned? Mom, he kicked me out and said I was no longer his daughter. These words sent a chill through my body. Dominguez would never say something like that, and even if he did, the situation turned out much worse than I expected. I entered the house and saw smoke damage on the walls, and the smell was absolutely terrible, penetrating into every corner of our house. It was obvious that living here under such conditions was impossible. I was making my way through the house and decided to take some clothes and personal items for a few days. When I went into the bedroom and saw that everything had disappeared, I was seized with panic. I realized that all my things, shoes, and personal belongings were missing. My heart sank to my stomach when I looked at the nightstand for my wedding rings, and they were gone. Why did I leave the rings? What was I thinking? If Dominguez saw them on the dresser, he must have thought that I had abandoned him and left our marriage. How could I be so stupid and selfish? In complete panic, I ran through the house, looking into every room, and realized that all my things were gone. A terrible thought came to me. Did he burn everything, nothing left? I ran out of the house and returned to the studio to take a closer look at the remains. I saw picture frames in the middle of the room and pieces of clothing that were not completely destroyed. It became clear that Dominguez did not accept my one-time action as I expected, and in fact, destroyed everything that was important to me by cutting me out of his life in one fell swoop. I called Dolores, crying, and told her what happened and that I needed somewhere to stay. Alejandro quickly invited me to stay with him, but he was the last person in the world I wanted to see. And I told him that I needed to be alone and asked him to leave. He was hurt by my rage and left me standing there, shedding tears. At that moment, I was angry with myself and with the man with whom I spent the night. I knew I was wrong, but I blamed him for my selfish act of betrayal when the fault was clearly mine. Dolores, I lost your dad. Mom, don't say that. Honey, he burned everything. All my clothes, my paintings, my studio. Everything. He didn't leave me anything. Not even a place to live. He doesn't answer his calls or call back. I hurt him the most and I don't blame him. What I did can't be forgiven. I should never have gone on that date and just told him how I felt. We could have worked it out, but my selfishness pushed him away him. If I were in his place, I could never take him back. What should I do now? I have no place to live and not a single thing. Mom, don't blame yourself. It's partly my fault. You can live with us until your house is repaired. We can buy new clothes this afternoon and get you settled in tonight. Dolores, all my paintings and sculptures are gone. Thirty years of marriage and twenty years of my life's work are destroyed, and I am left alone. I have nothing worth living for. Maria sobbed openly as neighbors watched from the road. Oh God, your father is calling me now. I'll call you back. Mechanically pressing buttons, desperately trying to answer the phone, the call almost ended, but at the last second she managed to connect the call. Dominguez, is that you? Hi, Maria. How are you doing? Dominguez, where are you? Please come home. We need to talk. No, Maria. I know everything from your daughter. Yes, your daughter, not mine. You are both dead to me, and this is probably the last time we speak. Dominguez, no, please don't say that. I love you. You should know this. Dominguez, the studio is destroyed. Did you do it? Mary, you did it. Not me. Maybe not physically, but she burned from your treachery and betrayal. When I saw your wedding rings, left behind while you gave yourself to another, you died in my heart. Your actions are not forgiven, and Dolores' involvement was humiliating and beyond my comprehension. We are finished. I will meet with the lawyers on Monday and begin the process. Please, Dominguez. 
can we talk and get over this? You can't just throw away our thirty wonderful years like this. Mary, we are talking, and it was not me who abandoned our thirty wonderful years. You plotted betrayal and gave me two weeks of incredible love to assuage your guilt and then cheated on me with the help of your daughter. There is no man on this green earth who could would accept such actions, forgive and forget this level of deceit and betrayal. It was pure evil, and I pray that you regret your actions for the rest of your pathetic life. This will be the last time we speak. You can contact me through my lawyer's contact information, which will be attached to the divorce. Goodbye, Maria. Dominguez. No, wait. Dominguez. Dominguez. Dominguez disappeared, and the world that I loved and appreciated disappeared. Dolores arrived just as I was holding the phone, calling for Dominguez, who had already passed out. We hugged each other, both crying for her loss. We finally realized that we couldn't stay in the ruins of my house while the fire department and police investigated and sorted out the situation, so we went to Dolores' house. When we came to Dolores, she explained everything to Andreas, who was shocked by her story. Dolores tried to explain the whole story, but when Andreas found out that his wife had arranged a date with another man, he was shocked and outraged, and his anger flared. Dolores, you arranged a date with another man for your mother, and besides, you knew that your father would be alone. You should have known that he would not accept it. What kind of man would allow his wife to go on a date with another man? You will you do this when we grow up? Will you willingly cheat on me like your mom did with your dad? He was such a great guy, and you and your mom were his world. What have you done, Dolores? I'll tell you what you did. You destroyed a good man and made him do unimaginable things. I can't begin to express to you how disappointed I am in you, Dolores. I'm going to contact him and apologize for your stupidity. When this is over, you and I will talk about our future together. Plans? Children with you are officially on hold until I better understand your values. Let me be clear, I do not share and will never accept this kind of betrayal. His anger shocked her, and she was surprised that he did not understand her mother's situation. It was just one date after thirty years, for God's sake. What's the matter? She later learned that it was about the breakdown of her parents' marriage, the loss of her father and her mother's happy life. Soon they will all learn the consequences of her action. Return of Dominguez After five long days, I returned home to assess the damage. I wasn't going to file the insurance claim because I didn't want to add more potential charges to what I already had. At the meeting with the lawyer, I explained that the house is mine and is not part of the division of property. Maria could get half our savings and no alimony. If she had contested the claim, I would have filed for divorce on charges of adultery and told everyone how she cheated on me with her daughter's friend. I have already started the divorce papers. I then asked for a criminal arson lawyer, but after meeting with them, I realized that since I was the property owner, there would likely not be criminal charges unless I filed an insurance claim, which I had no intention of doing. In the worst case scenario, there may be fines from the fire department, but criminal charges will not go through the courts unless a false report was filed. One of our neighbors, who Dolores went to school with, called Dolores after she saw me come home and enter the house. Dolores quickly drove up to see me. I was surveying the damage and assessing the work needed to make the house livable again when I heard the front door open. Daddy, Daddy, where are you? I heard Dolores scream as she entered the house. I didn't answer and continued assessing the damage. I smiled, looking out the window at the pile of ashes that had once been Mary's refuge. When Dolores found me in one of the bedrooms, she quickly rushed to me and hugged me tightly. Dad, I'm so sorry. Forgive us. We love you. Dolores, I will never forgive you both and I told you not to talk to me anymore. Now please, let me go and leave me alone. No, you are my dad and you must forgive me. I am your only daughter and you love me. Pay attention. I no longer have a daughter, only a treacherous woman who broke my heart. You are no longer my daughter, please leave me alone. 
Dad, Mom needs you. She stayed with us and misses you very much. She cries all the time and wants to apologize to you for her mistake. Please come to our house and see her. Won't happen. The moment she went on a date and spent the night with another man, she ended our marriage. Yes, she even left her wedding rings on the table, which symbolized the end of our marriage. It's over, and I'm no longer... I will talk to her. Both of you can contact me through my lawyer. I will get a new phone and number later today, but for now, you better go to your slutty mother. Are you really going to throw away 30 years of a happy marriage with your mom? No, I'm not going to. Your mother threw away those 30 years the moment she took off her rings and left with her lover. It was you both who destroyed my 30 happy years, and for that I will never forgive or forget. Now get out of my house. The second time, Dolores ran out of her parents' house, crying. The pain of being told by her dad that she was no longer his daughter was devastating and devastating. No amount of therapy can take away the pain of his words. The next day, Maria received divorce papers and collapsed upon realizing that her marriage was over due to her selfish act of infidelity. She tried to fight it, tried counseling, tried to talk to Dominguez to no avail. He didn't want to talk to her or Dolores anymore. Andreas, nevertheless, contacted Dominguez and expressed his anger and disappointment in connection with the actions of the girls. He told him that he was considering starting a family because of Dolores's dishonesty and her involvement in what she did to Dominguez. Andreas had no intention of living with a woman who felt this way and was currently in the process of counseling together to try to save his marriage. Maria wanted to return home after Dominguez reclaimed it, but the divorce agreement stated that the house belonged to Dominguez and was not part of the property division. She would have to find her own place to live. At trial, the judge took half of their savings and set alimony at 3000 a month for 10 years, which she had no intention of paying. Maria had to find a job and support herself something she had not had to do during the previous 30 years of their marriage. She eventually moved out of her daughter's apartment and moved into a small studio near the city center, where she found work at a small art gallery as a sales agent to make ends meet. Maria's artistic freedom was suddenly thwarted. She could no longer spend all her time in the wonderful studio Dominguez had built for her. She could no longer sit in front of her art projects and enjoy the beautiful view of the lake, from the large picture windows her husband gave her. Soon she had to spend too much time working, using her free time to maintain some semblance of her old life. All her free time disappeared, along with the luxuries and happy marriage, for a night of excitement with another man. She could never find enough tears to undo all the pain and suffering caused by her one-time experience. No, her loving husband, Dominguez, will never want to talk to her again. After learning how he had disowned his daughter, she was left heartbroken and sad. The grandmother became deeply depressed due to the consequences of her relationship with her father and her parents' marriage. She saw a therapist to cope with the pain and save her own marriage, which was now on the brink of collapse. A few months later, the house was restored. Dominguez continued to pay the judgment and sold the property without notice to anyone. One day after the sale, Maria came to him to try to restore the relationship and ask for forgiveness. When she rang the doorbell, she was greeted by a young couple. Hi, how can we help you? The woman asked. Yes, I'm looking for Dominguez Sanchez. Is he here? Oh, that nice man who sold us this house? No, he said he was leaving the country to start a new life. He was so nice and helpful. Are you, by any chance, Maria? Yes, it's me. He left an envelope and made us promise to give it to you if you ever stop by. Thanks, I'll read it later. Good luck and enjoy this wonderful house. Maria sat in her car and cried, knowing that she would never see Dominguez again, and for the love she had so carelessly thrown away. Back in her lonely apartment, she sat in bed, her hands shaking as she opened the letter. Maria, 30 wonderful years, I will always remember the wonderful life we spent together. You were my first and only love, and I am so sorry that I failed as your husband. If I had known that you needed more, I would move heaven and earth for you, 
but since you chose to go your own way, this is how our marriage will end. Alone. After two wonderful weeks before your betrayal, I truly believed that you loved me again. Those weeks were the happiest moments I spent with you in all these years. When Dolores explained how you used those weeks to soothe my soul from your betrayal, it crushed my soul. I'm sure your daughter has already told you, but that night I was so looking forward to coming home and giving you a special night. With two dozen roses, your favorite chocolates and wine, I was going to surprise you with a new love boat cruise. I felt foolish and humiliated when I found out that your love and admiration was fake and your real goal was to be with another man. Congratulations, you ruined me and our marriage. Because of this, I cannot stay in this city. I quit my job and found a new life in another country. Don't worry, don't try to find me, as I will be out of sight and really don't want to talk to you or your daughter anymore. This stage of my life is over, and I will start a new life without you. The pain and betrayal that you and your daughter brought will take me many years to get over. There is no way I could stay in this wonderful home without the love of my life and my wonderful daughter. Since they are both dead to me now, there is no reason to stay here. I sincerely hope that your special night was worth our marriage and my love. I suspect so, and I'm sure you and your daughter will enjoy the stories you share. May you have a shitty life, and please forget about me and our years together. I've already done it. My new life has already begun without you. DS. She truly believed that she had no tears left, but after reading his letter, she cried continuously all night, curled up in a doll position. The excitement and memory of having amazing sex with Alejandro became a distant memory, now replaced by regret and sorrow. Now, 52 and alone, she realized her future without Dominguez was bleak. She threw away her luxurious life for one night of selfish excitement. Dominguez meets Alejandro. Alejandro received an overnight visit from Dominguez the night before he left for his new home in Ecuador. When the door opened, Dominguez forced his way into his house and introduced himself as the husband of the woman he had taken from him. Alejandro tried to explain that he thought it was okay for him to be with Maria and would never have pursued her if he didn't think so. But it was already too late, and Dominguez did not accept any apology. All the anger, rage, and pain he had endured over the past months had been directed at the predator in front of him. The conversation was short, as Dominguez used a crowbar, which he held in his right hand, to smash the left side of Alejandro's face. Seeing the six-inch gash on his face, Dominguez knew that his attractiveness was no longer one of his assets and would become a lasting reminder of his night with Maria. Alejandro will need facial reconstruction surgery and two knee replacements. Dominguez looked down at the groaning man and said, Advice, idiot. Fucking a married woman is not good for your health. By the time Alejandro got to the emergency room and told the police what had happened, Dominguez was already heading to his new apartment on the beach in the province of Manabi. His new life was about to begin without previous baggage or family. It took police detectives two weeks to learn that Dominguez was no longer in the country and could not detain him until he returned home. Even if they had managed to find him, there would have been no extradition for the assault in Ecuador. Alejandro spent two painful weeks in the hospital and many months in physical therapy learning to walk with his new knees. Unfortunately for him, the 25 stitches on his face will leave a lasting reminder of that night with a married woman. It wasn't clear to him what kind of sex life, if any, he would lead after losing both testicles. But he knew that the life he once led was over, thanks to these two women who talked him into taking another man's wife. He never spoke or saw either Maria or Dolores again. Dolores's husband, Andreas, almost divorced her because of the incident, but a marriage counselor helped Dolores realize her actions and promised loyalty to Andreas and their future family. Andreas waited two years before agreeing to have children, to ensure that his wife would never betray him again, as she had done to her father. True to her word and with regret, Dolores never communicated with Dominguez again. Through her actions, she rejected her father and his love forever. Maria and Dolores were shocked to learn of Alejandro's beating and felt guilty for the attack, 
which added to the guilt and pain they caused Dominguez by destroying his family. It was another reminder that their actions had far-reaching consequences that they had no idea about. They realized that their delusional thought that if Dominguez had allowed Maria just once, their happy life would have continued, was wrong. The result of their stupidity was something far from the truth. Even their father and husband was a deep wound that they would carry for the rest of their lives. Due to depression and age, she never found another man and lived a lonely, sad life. All her plans for a happy retirement with Dominguez and her grandchildren were now a distant memory. After Dominguez stopped paying child support by moving abroad, her savings would not last long and she would have to continue working to survive. Crying before falling asleep has become a routine activity. Dominguez's new life in Ecuador, I now have over three quarters of a million US dollars from the sale of my home and the money I have saved over the past 30 years since purchasing my new condo. With this amount here in Ecuador, my next 30 years will be spent in comfort and peace. There are many young, beautiful women here who appreciate a generous Spanish, and I enjoy the company of each of them. Six months after that terrible night, I found myself on the beach in Puerto Lopez in front of my new condo, drinking a cold beer, and came to the realization that divorce is okay, separation is okay, being alone is okay. It is unacceptable to stay in a place where you are not valued or respected. This will never happen again.